Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody out there in podcast land. You are in tune to another episode of Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. This is Hamza, and you guys need to hold on to your seats today. My guest, and we're going to cover a lot in this hour, and I'm sure this is definitely going to have some replay value um, when we have someone like the uh, the guest today. I mean, they have been in this community I want to say, and they'll, I'll let them confirm, I mean, it seems like their whole life, they're definitely a searcher of truth. They're definitely questioning things, um, definitely going down the rabbit hole and come out of the rabbit hole, which is also good. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome to the podcast, Lawrence Gallion, and uh, welcome to the podcast, Lawrence. Well, Hamza, thank you very much for inviting me, and it's really exciting to be here. Thanks again. Sure. Uh, Before we get started, I do want to say that outside of your website, I did enjoy your SoundCloud channel uh, because you are a classical pianist, and you have a lot of great music on your SoundCloud channel that's really soothing. Uh, Well, that's very nice of you to say. I appreciate it. Appreciate the plug, and um, well, yeah, I, I've been playing piano since I was uh, six years old. So uh, I, I mean, I just love music. I uh, uh, thank thank God for music because I could never have survived all these years without without good music. Here, here, I, I totally agree with you, and there is that saying that music calms the savage beast. And a lot of people are influenced by music. So at, from being in music at six years old and, and you're still in it today, what's your take on the attributes of music and how it can be used to influence people positively and negatively? Oh, well, yeah, that's, that's a great question because um, I don't know people have such really strong feelings about music i mean there's there's so much of this like the the new age music that is very calm and relaxing and a lot of people say that that's very spiritual but then you know there's there's other people who say well well wait a minute like like i love heavy metal music and and uh that brings me a, a lot of joy a lot of happiness a lot of pleasure a lot of fun and uh so why isn't that spiritual and i agree with them uh i i think i think any music that like uh that makes that makes you feel good that makes uh that that brings joy to your life uh that 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 helps you to live your life i mean more power to you uh it can be any style of music the only the only caveat that I would put here is that when like uh, the lyrics uh, start to become negative, and uh, that's like what in, in my uh, my new book about Gnosticism, I'm 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 writing about how like and negativity is like really influencing the world uh, in in a real bad way. So so we're finding that. Like with uh, with a lot of music, there, there's like uh, lyrics about uh, about very superficial things, about violence, uh, and uh, that that can that can only bring that can only bring negativity and uh, and bad things to to the world and, and to your personal life. I, I can't uh, I, I can't. Uh, put it any other way that uh, it, it, it's it's not helpful to uh, to surround yourself with any kind of negativity, uh, be it music or uh, people or whatever. Mm-hmm. And when you're talking about Gnosticism, it made me think of Sylvia Brown, and I remember I recall her saying that on the Astral that uh, the heavy metal, as you mentioned, or rap music, it's very low vibration, so it's not usually, I mean, it can't really survive, if, if that could be a word, um, 
in different realms. And it seems to me that historically, from a music standpoint, there was a lot of subtleties and innuendo. The message may have still been the same. Today, it's more so in your face. What do you say to that? Well, you know, part of it, I think, is, is that's bullshit. Uh, in the sense that, um, uh, like, for instance, uh, like, people talk about the low vibration and high vibration. Now, think about, like, for example, like a, uh, a symphony orchestra. Now, who the heck is going to say that, uh, like, oh, let's say a violin because it can play really high notes. So like they're, they're vibrating at a very high frequency that that violin is a superior instrument to the double bass that is also a string instrument, but they can play very, very low notes that vibrate at a very slow frequency. They're, they're both needed. To, com- to complete the sound of the symphony orchestra. We need the instruments that play the low notes, like a tuba, for instance, um, and we need uh, like a, a trumpet uh, that can play more high notes, but they're, they're both brass instruments. Uh, so, like, when people start talking about, like like, vibrations, I get, uh, I don't know. I don't feel really comfortable with that. I I kind of get the idea of what they're saying, but also you can think of like uh, the light spectrum. I mean, there are there are colors that that are truly vibrating at a higher frequency than other colors, but I think all the colors of the light spectrum are beautiful and spiritual. And um, and I, I wouldn't say one color is superior to another color of the of the rainbow. So mm. yeah, that's where I stand at that. No, that's a, a really good point. And I, I, when you were talking about the light spectrum, it made me think of the past three months. I mean, we're going into July of 2020, and from March here in the states, you know, people had to stay at home. And it was just really interesting to watch across the globe um, from a light spectrum perspective how clear the air was and how uh, like places like Venice, the water was clear. Places like India, they have had smog for years. It was clear, and you had the ability to actually experience the whole light spectrum, whereas before that spectrum has been dimmed. Have you seen... Uh, what's your take on 2020 as in regards to the light spectrum? Oh, well, that's that's interesting. I uh, uh, we're we're having um, uh, at, actually right now where I'm living. I live in the country of Mexico, and mm-hmm. in the um, in the state of Puebla, and here we're having the worst. Um, case of uh of covid-19 um uh just about in all of mexico uh it's really bad and uh we're in like the uh the code red zone <laughs> there's that color but um but as far as uh i like to think of uh like you're talking about the clarity and mm-hmm. I'm very much into that concept, almost, almost in a Zen sort of way. Like, like I don't believe that it's it's very wise to put a lot of like religious dogma or um, belief systems in your way. I think that just like like clouds the issue. Um, and and what we really need to do is to to become as clear as possible to make our our minds as clear as possible i i practice a great deal just just ceasing all that mind chatter that goes on in 
in in uh, one's head, uh, and uh, I, I'm I'm not perfect at it, but I've I've gotten pretty good at like just quieting quieting my mind and uh, allowing just just that clear light of of consciousness to to shine through and um and for my money that that's that's much more magical uh and wonderful than uh than all sorts of ceremonies and rituals and whatnot um just the, the pure clarity of of consciousness without without thought, without dogma, without religion, and so forth and so on. Mm-hmm. And um, when you when you were talking about uh, the quiet, you know that there has been some conversation about the year 2020 being perfect vision, and with the stay at home, and as you mentioned, these worst case scenarios. This is the first time in a long time in recorded memory that people have been forced to kind of just sit home. And in that quietness, you're able to actually tap in as opposed to before the tapping, there was the weapons of mass distraction where you were just distracted from maybe your higher purpose. Yeah, well, in my opinion, the most difficult thing like to ask somebody to do is to just simply sit in a chair and do nothing. Um, And... I mean, I've heard statistics that like uh, mental health problems in uh, the United States, I'm originally from New York, uh, but I've, I've heard that mental health problems in the United States have gone up 30% uh, and uh, as well as psychiatric prescriptions that um, some people are, are really freaking out with this whole uh, quiet thing. Whereas, as you say, there are other people who are really benefiting from, uh, from the, the beautiful quiet and, and, and the lack of traffic, the lack of, uh, uh, I grew up on Long Island, so uh, we constantly had uh, the noise of airplanes going to JFK passing overhead or, uh, there, there must be like ten airports on uh, on Long Island, uh, military airports, LaGuardia. Um, so always, I was hearing sounds of airplanes, helicopters, and lots of traffic, trains, so forth. Um, so, so just just to hear this, like um, the silence now is is it's. It's really incredible, and I, I think, I think if the, the, a person is like, is ready for it, uh, they can, they can really benefit from it. I, I, I mean, I, for me, I've, I've really, I've really enjoyed it. It's given me an opportunity to, uh, to think more deeply about certain aspects of my life. It's given me the opportunity to plunge into. Uh, to books that have been postponing reading for a long time, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and uh, I, I'm I'm really lately into exploring uh, uh, yoga mudra and yoga pranayama. So mm-hmm. like the breathing is like uh, I'm enjoying just breathing and and doing the yoga mudras. So yeah, it's. It, for me, it's been wonderful, and um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not there. I don't have boots on the ground in the United States right now, but um, yeah, I, I hear various things. I try to keep up to date, but not as far as the news goes. I've just completely, um, completely stopped uh, all of mainstream news media for at least three months, maybe four months now. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's, that's just absolute garbage. And I also limit my intake of um, the alternative uh, media also because um, uh, there, there's a lot of forces that are, are trying to, um, 
trying to benefit from uh, what's going on now. And uh, different people have their different agendas. And um, so I prefer to just, um, to just keep, keep on my track, you know, and not, um, not try to get involved with other people's agendas. I, I think that's a big mistake is when people like uh, take their take their cues, take their um, take their marching orders from other people. I mean, think for yourself, man. Uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, just we've we've got like our own minds. And um, and so, uh, but people are like, oh, tell me what to do. Tell me what to think. Uh, tell me what to believe. Uh, and I will follow you. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. Uh, that, that's the road to perdition. Um, you know, you, if, you you got to think for yourself. That's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's that rule number one into, in my book. It is, and it goes, into, it goes into the argument of, I guess, middle age. It's not really middle age, but let's just say middle 30s. Before you get to your middle 30s, right, you have this plan or program that you go to school, you get a job, you get the white picket fence, you get the wife, you get the, the kids and what have you. And then when you're in your mid-30s, you're like, okay, what else? do you want me to do it's kind of like blank slate but you've been following the program for so long and it, it leaves a lot of people to question their existence or what's going on um and i think today would be indicative of that since it's so out of left field people are just like well i don't know what to do <laughs> i can't really think for myself well that's a good point i love that phrase it's so out of left field because that's so true. Because if we didn't, uh, we didn't receive any like um, I don't know, like uh, information when we were kids about what to do when there was a pandemic um, or you know a plague. Uh, what what's what, what's the instructions uh, to follow in, whenever there's a plague? Uh, so I, I really like that out of left field uh, remark <laughs> but yeah but you you're right it's um it's it's like people are programmed and men and women to like uh to think about uh life in a certain way and uh, that that's something else that i've been exploring lately it's 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 like i think like women are like Thinking that oh well i'll I'll just wait until I'm in my thirties to have uh to have a baby and uh, to get married and to have children and uh and and then they suddenly find that well the, the, you know the marketplace is not the same as it was when they were in their twenties um and uh, and and guys too are like guys too get get all confused with uh with what they should be doing and um i don't know we're like uh so much program to uh to follow like in the footsteps of our parents or uh and 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 that's that's where i really think i mean i wish i wish so much that i had the lawrence gallian that I am now at this age, when I was 20, when I was 30, and when I was 40, it would have made such a difference just to have someone my age, with my experience, just to talk to, like I'm talking about like, like mentorship, um, just someone to talk to, someone to bounce ideas off of, and... I mean that's something that that was like uh much more common in the past that that mm -hmm. people respected the elders they listened to the elders they listened to the stories of the elders they went to the elders for advice and um but now it's it's such a strong 
emphasis on like youth culture and I, I think that's that's the fault of Hollywood I think that's the fault of uh, the whole advertising business uh, that if you don't look like you're 20 if you don't have uh, you know uh, I don't know everything is like just focused around uh, looking and and feeling as young and um, you know it, it, I think it's just twisting and and bending society out of shape because um, we just like I was talking about that orchestra we need people of all ages we need uh, it's it's not just uh, we don't just need the young we we need to listen we need to listen to the people who have been around the block and mm. can can give us some some good solid advice like 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 what kind of women to stay away from or and <laughs> women, what kind of men to stay away from and you know it's like that kind of thing it's like uh when we're young we just uh we're driven a lot by our hormones um and um and when we get when we're like more my age like like the hormones are not like running our lives my mm -hmm. hormones like now are like not in control i mean they're still working they're working fine but uh they don't they don't run my life and um so so yeah that's you, it. I, I really go ahead sure so what about uh, i'm just thinking about the a traditional timeline if you will right on 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 this blue marble so children are very capable. I mean, they see your previous life and conversations with them. They have imaginary friends. They have psychic capabilities. You know, they just came from across the veil. So, the, you know, it's, it's not hidden to them yet. But when they go through or when we go through adolescence, a lot of that goes away. And then, like you said, once you get to your, like, 40s and beyond, then that kind of comes back. Isn't that the natural progression that – if you if we were on the cloud one we probably wouldn't want to reincarnate or incarnate and then two we wouldn't be able to relate to people because we hadn't gone through what they were going through what, what do you think about a traditional timeline like I just laid out well boy you just threw out a whole bunch of stuff there uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know where to, where to begin <laughs> with that uh, yeah I mean um, are, are are you like saying that there's the that there's like a uh, uh, like a kind of wave that 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 happens that that when that when we're young we we have like a, a, a more we're closer to um, our roots uh, our source and uh, then we go through our I don't know raising a family getting a job. Uh, the get the house uh, the white picket fence and everything but then after that then then we can again um reach out or approach the source yeah it's one on, at? yeah on a on a lighter way on a lighter question is you know you always have the uh, i'll use i can't i'll use myself for this example right if if the kids are running out of the house and i'm like shut the door like the I'm not paying for my air for the whole neighborhood or something like that and then I go oh, I sound like my father oh my god right but when you were a kid you didn't listen to your, to your parents but when you're older you're like oh I understand what they were saying that's kind of what I was getting at. Uh, oh well yeah definitely um, it's uh, yeah I've, I've got a stepdaughter and uh, and uh, it it yeah I'm, I'm supporting i'm supporting a family and uh it's it's like uh when i start talking about um oh well i've got i've got to think about uh, uh my uh my my woman's 
uh, birthday, and then there's there's Mother's Day, and then there's uh, my my stepdaughter's birthday, and then there's graduation, and then there's uh, Christmas, and and then down here they have like holidays for like the uh, the three wise men, so that's more presents, and um, so it just it just goes on and on and on and um it's just um daddy can i have more money kind of thing and um and even now like uh uh my wife is it like she talks like oh well you're always bringing up money you're always talking about money that's the first thing you're saying and you know i just don't think like like they get it that um that that a man sees that like his responsibility is is to his family it's um that's part of like the way we men like look at our job our our role in life at least the way many of us were brought up is that um is that we have to take care of our loved ones uh and we enjoy taking care of our loved ones i'm not saying I don't enjoy doing this, but um, but uh, gee, yeah, it's uh, it, it can be a lot of pressure, and uh, and yeah, I can understand where my where my parents were coming from a lot of times now uh, that I didn't understand when I was younger, but um, but then again, there are some things that I I absolutely don't understand, like. My two best friends in high school. Um, one was one was a black guy from from Haiti, and the other guy uh, was was Jewish. And oh, my father had such a prejudice against uh, Jews and and blacks, and uh, and he told me to get rid of my two best friends, a- and I said no way. And um, my father and I never, like, had anything, like, physical between us as far as fighting or anything. But that time when I told him, no way, they're my friends, he took a swing at me. So um, so there are certain points where, um, no, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not cool with that. Well, maybe it's because I... I, I don't think your audience knows. Uh, I'm adopted, uh, mm. and, and so uh, so I have uh, I have different genes than uh, my my adoptive parents. So mm. uh, that probably plays into it a great deal. I recently did uh, one of those uh, DNA uh, things and. Uh, I found out that uh I do have uh uh ancestors from from North Africa from from the Middle East uh Turkey Greece um and uh and and in north of Europe also but I I thought that was very interesting to uh to find out the uh the the uh north africa connection and uh turkey because mm-hmm. I, uh, I i must have visited turkey like four or five times uh in my life i uh i i, I really love that country and uh and bulgaria um so so yeah now i know i have and i and i i was visiting those places before I did any of this uh, DNA mm-hmm. testing stuff. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, uh, it's amazing that, that you know, I'm a, I'm a musician, as you mentioned, and I'm an author. And uh, after I had published my first book and uh, had my first uh, music performed uh, on national radio, I I found my biological parents and I discovered that my biological mother is a musician mm-hmm. and my biological father is an author. Mm-hmm. So um there goes that whole 
what is it, nature <laughs> versus nurture Better thing? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> for I mean, sure. Wow. I mean, like, I mean, I was just following the uh, DNA. Uh, it's amazing. And then yeah, and my blueprint. mother was like, she was reading, like, the Seth books. Did you mm-hmm. read, like, uh, yeah, she was reading the Seth books and um, going to New Age conferences and, and all this stuff. And uh, we also had the same famous, uh, same favorite composer, Oh, it's spooky. It's really spooky. Uh, <laughs> I, I, like the, I like the saying that there's no accidents. And so um, the, the interesting thing about third dimension is the contrast. And I, I wanted to ask you, being adopted, uh, do you think that led you to where you are today because of that contrast? You're like, there has to be something else. I mean, you cover a gamut in a lot of different subject matters. And do you think you would not have if you didn't have that contrast, either like relationships with your father or just the traveling and finding out your natural parents? I would say definitely. Uh, nobody's ever asked me that question. So uh, kudos to you, man, for, for asking me that. But I would say yes. I would, I would say a definite yes to that because uh, I have – I have gone like like Star Trek, like uh, uh, where where no man has gone before. I've really I've really explored so much in my life, and um, and I'm continuing. I don't think uh, I don't think I've turned the last page yet. I still got a I still have a lot more that I'm uh, uh, I'm exploring and. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm very, very much into this idea of, of ancestors. I, I do think that they are with us. I do think that uh, it's important to honor the ancestors, and I think they can support us and help us. We can call on them in time of need, uh, and uh, so I, I, I recommend for anyone out there to uh, to do their family tree, uh, I guarantee you're going to find so much that's so interesting. Uh, get several DNA tests and and then start working your family tree. And um, uh, I've also participated in something. It's new. It's called Family Constellations. Have you ever okay. heard that? Phrase? I have not. No. Oh wow! It is a, it's a new form of, I guess you would call it psychology, but it's not like you know your typical psychology. It, it was like invented by this man who, uh, who combined. He was like he was a ex Catholic priest living in Africa. So he was combining like uh, the rituals, the ancestral rituals uh, that he saw in various tribes there, and um, it, it's a it's very very exciting because uh, if you 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 go into like uh, you go into a room and there's a, like maybe 50 people in the room, and uh, you tell them what your problem is. And then the person who's leading, leading the constellation will actually pick out strangers, just people in the group, to represent everybody that's in your particular situation. And then it's, it's the most incredible thing that happens, that these people, complete strangers that you have never met, they begin to t- take on, it's sort of like the morphogenetic field of, of the people in your life. They don't even know, they don't know these people in your life, but they start acting um, and playing, the, the, playing out the whole situation that you're facing in your life. And you can kind of get to see it like, um, like in 3D, um, 
and sometimes the the person leading the constellation will will place you into the constellation and you can interact with the people and um, it's just amazing I would uh, the, the person who invented it is called is named Bert Hellinger and um, I don't agree with everything that he teaches he's a little weird at times but um, man he's come up with something completely new and really powerful and really interesting I've, I've done about four or five of these constellations so far mm-hmm. um, and uh, I don't know they're, they're, they're really hot down here uh, yeah very, very, I was gonna, very, I was gonna oh, ask go you because I mean, it does sound really exciting and being that you're in Mexico it actually made me think of the the movie Coco and Coco does I don't know if you've seen the movie Coco or not, but yeah, there, yeah, in, a while ago, yes, yes. Yeah, in the, in the states, it seems that we're kind of uh, I don't know we don't have access to. I mean, it you get little peaks and valleys here, but outside of the U.S., there is that great resonance with honoring your ancestors and such. And like in the movie Coco, if you don't honor them. Right, it's kind of like they die, even though they don't. But the memory of them dies. So the fact that you know these guys are taking not taking advantage, but of highlighting family constellations, because I agree with you, and I have had help with ancestors that come through with something either I'm dealing with or something I don't even know what's going to come down the road. Right? They're like, no, make a right at the at the end of the street, and I don't even see the end of the street yet. So it's definitely a benefit. But I was wondering if you had greater interest because you are living in Mexico and you are more so adapting to that culture there versus life in Long Island. Oh yeah, I can't help it. I mean, everything is is much closer here. I mean, uh for instance, like like I know all my neighbors by name. Um and uh I frequently associate with them and um uh, and and most of the places where I lived in New York, I lived in St. Louis, Florida. I didn't I didn't know. Maybe I knew my uh, the two closest neighbors to me, but uh, no more than that. Uh, but even even when people are talking uh, together here, they they actually stand much closer than you stand mm-hmm. like when you. <laughs> It's amazing. It's like I don't know what I'm going to do. Like when I like return to the United States, like <laughs> I'm going to like have to be really careful not to like stand too close to people because um, it's uh, and 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 also family is family is so very important here, and the mother, the role of the mother has such great significance. Um, and, uh, so yeah, like family is of extreme importance. And so, and, and also there is, uh, like our Halloween, um, it, here, uh, it's truly the day of the dead. It's mm-hmm. truly a day where, um, they, they create the most beautiful, um, what they basically are is kind of an altar to uh, as many relatives as they want. And in that altar, they will put the things that their relative loved. Like if their relative loved uh, whiskey, they'll put a bottle of whiskey or cigars. They'll put a bottle, uh, they'll put uh, a box of cigars uh, or um or or what whatever classical music or whatever uh were the the loves of this person along with beautiful flowers and um and the foods that that this person liked uh with lots of candles and special incense that that goes all the way back to the time of the Aztecs 
they have this like really intense incense here um that's uh wow it's uh it's powerful and um so uh yeah i mean i i can't escape this this whole this whole ancestor culture here um but but the man who who, who founded this um family constellations uh, i believe he's german um mm-hmm. uh, if i'm not mistaken um but uh but probably it's taken root so much here in mexico because of yeah because of the traditional uh respect for for one's ancestors and um yeah, yeah and and like it, it's gotten me much more involved into investigating uh investigating my past and and most of my life i i spent 20 years looking for my biological parents so uh a great deal of my life was devoted to uh was devoted to looking for for my family mhm it it reminds me a little bit about uh, at least as I understand it, the origin of funeral homes, because culturally, you know, since this is a melting pot, before funeral homes, uh, a family member would get buried in the backyard. And if they were buried in the backyard or on the property, you know, and, and if they were murdered or something like that, they would come through after they transition and say, you know, this is the person that murdered me. And so the, the, yeah. the issue of, of funeral homes and what have you was let, let's centralize this place where they don't have immediate access to, you know, that family connection. And so it's just really interesting when, when we look at here, uh, before we had started recording, we were talking about um, – how we just get used to a culture and me when i used to live in in florida the spanish people would speak spanglish because they were slowly integrating into the american culture right so it was like get that ancestry worship out of (laughs) here in the states like you said we don't honor the elderly let alone your ancestors well that that whole thing about um contacting contacting the dead um and uh uh maybe you can help me with that what is that called with the uh using the is it Marco, um, where you, yes 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 um i know a lot of people are getting back into that it's um i i i do believe that that um that that we can make contact uh with the dead um i i have no doubt about that i i have been a big follower of uh someone by the name of rudolf steiner uh mm-hmm. all my life um mm-hmm. he was a um well actually he was uh, first involved with theosophy way back when um mm-hmm. and then he founded something called uh a- anthroposophy um and uh and he has like a series of of prayers uh for the dead but they're really like speaking about uh making the person comfortable on the other side helping them to uh to make the transition uh mm-hmm. i i think that's i think that's a big problem is like if people confuse like 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 spirituality what's the purpose of spirituality like why should i read these books or why should i go to church or blah 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 no the idea is that like this is a place that that we're going to like return to eventually like all of us like none of us are like going to escape this and uh and some people are going to like wake up there and be like where the hell am i what Mm -hmm. the hell is this and Mm -hmm. and yeah i think that whole idea of hell comes from the idea of people who have who don't want to explore their spirituality don't want to don't want to see their dead ancestor their their dead mother their dead father um 
people who don't want to have anything to do with that, when they're suddenly dead and they're on the other side, they freak out. They mm-hmm. ask, they're <laughs> like, and yeah, that's hell for them. I mean, it's mm-hmm. really hell. It's like, what the hell is going on here? Uh, but for people who have done the meditation or who have had uh, some kind of spiritual training experience, whatever, it's more like, okay, okay, I can get into this. I, I, you know, I, you know, this, this vibe, I, I've, I've experienced this before. This is not a hundred percent new to me. And, um, so, uh, yeah. Well, let me ask you this. But, uh, let me ask- let me ask you this, yeah. Lawrence. Yeah. So yeah, I, did, I didn't think I, did, I didn't think I was going to put on my tinfoil hat today, but I guess I'm putting <laughs> it on right now. <laughs> Go ahead, man. So Go ahead. <laughs> I, I want to ask you because from a uh, you know living, I live here in the states, and you're from the states, and you're in Mexico now. So you know, yeah. I, I want to ask from a a historical timeline standpoint. So we're familiar here in the states with the King James Bible, and most people don't know that King James actually wrote the book Demonology before he wrote the Bible. And so a lot of stuff in the Bible is take, I mean, is, has been left out from the Demonology book, right? So there was a concerted oh, effort to keep people away from knowing these things. And so that, I think that's why you have the pushback of people not wanting to know their ancestry or know about spirituality, or know about any of these things that give you intrinsic motivation from a homeless perspective? Well, it is. I mean, let's face it. I, I mean, what's new? I mean, there are people that suck, and there are people that are just wonderful, and that'll be there uh, in, in the blink of an eye if you need them. I mean, there are, you know, you have friends who are like friends for life and you have people who stab you in the back and it's no different in the spirit world i mean there are evil spirits or i don't i don't like so much as good evil uh words but anyway they're 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 spirits who are like not out for your your benefit and uh they're I mean, I, just by accident, uh, it flashed on my uh, my computer screen. Energy vampires. I mean, they yeah. are there are energy vampires walking. You know, we meet them every day, and um, they're, they're they're sucking our energy. And there are energy vampires in the um, the spirit worlds too. Then again, there are like what we call angels or benevolent beings that that like are are, are out to help us and and do help us i, I mean i i think they're like uh angels that that walk walk the earth all the time um and uh i just uh i was living in farmingdale long island and uh uh i had uh uh um I had a flat tire. It was in my parking lot, and my parking uh, my landlord was like, "What an asshole!" He had no lights in the parking lot. It was pitch black, and I was like, I couldn't get my my uh, the the lug nuts off because I just had like that stupid little uh, and it wasn't a good like wrench. Well, uh, I'm working, working. I'm like, "What am I going to do? What am I going to do?" All of a sudden. Out of the blue, this car comes like like 50 miles an hour, skids to a halt right next to my car. Now, we're in complete darkness. It's a Hispanic guy and his woman, and he says, you need help, man? And I said, oh, yeah, definitely. And he, so I, I, I go to, like, uh, start to... Uh, help him with the with the tire. He goes, no, 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 no. Just relax. I'll do it all. And and this this guy took out took out all his tools, changed my tire for me, and, and my wife speaking Spanish with with his girlfriend, and then the blah blah blah. And then he just said, have a good night. See you later. I mean, 
How did mm. he know I had a flat tire? Mm. It's just the, you know, this is a small example, but these people like they do appear in emergencies in in the strangest of situations, um, mm. and and I have attended. Um, uh, what do they call those churches where they uh, they actually do make contact with the dead? Um, I attended one for uh, I don't know for a few months, and it was um, it was really beautiful. Actually, I I thought it would be like really freaky and um, I don't know like uh, everybody depressed and every, but no, it was like very positive and. Um, the vibe was really beautiful. Uh, I would definitely return to this, you know, to this place again. Um, and uh, so I, I, I don't have, you know, I, I, I do like, like various, maybe you could say rituals of like protection to uh, uh, like, uh, there, there's a whole thing of like, uh, uh, covering yourself with with blue light blue light mm -hmm. has a tendency to to keep away any kind of negativity so mm -hmm. if you ever feel if you ever feel like a negative vibe around you or negative people just imagine a blue light encircling you and and it really gives you protection and uh and i do use that i do use that often it's important that you really highlighted that, especially in 2020, because it appears, at least in my perception, since 2020, since 2012, that a lot of people are getting more access, like they're more open to experiencing things, and they don't have any protection, right? So they're just getting hit on both sides, and they really can't, they, they're not using that discernment. And I know from at least your site, Talk a little bit about your site because you do kind of go into, I mean, we've been talking about gratitude. And if we are appreciative, like if that person that come out of the blue to fix our flat and what have you or the experiences of life, we'll get more of those and it will lead us down the maybe our intended path. So can you talk a little bit about your site because you talk a, a lot about some really good things that can lead people in the right direction. Oh, yeah, well, I, I gratitude you 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 hit the nail right on the head I mean gratitude is such a I mean it's like putting gasoline in your engine it just uh, or I don't know what STP or something like that it, it just supercharges you because uh, the more gratitude you put out there like the more good things that, that, that come back at you um, but um, yeah I think people People are now like being flooded with uh, with all sorts of things, and they don't really know what to do uh, with them. But um, like, there's there's so many things. Uh, like in my in my new book, uh, like I have 40 techniques like people can use to help to uh, to protect themselves and to help uh, to help to help create good good vibrations that that will like that'll keep away the energy vampires that'll keep away the negativity and um we were just talking about um the incense before that that's one thing like i i really recommend uh like aroma of any kind like uh um what do they call it uh the uh uh is it a natural oils mm -hmm. um uh yeah just uh as, as long as it's natural and not not artificial it's just essential natural essential oils uh experiment with those uh i found in particular i don't know if it works for every guy but uh myrrh oil uh has attracted a lot of girlfriends for me in my <laughs> life so I, I don't know i'm just putting that out there but uh, <laughs> but uh yeah like uh people like like guys are like embarrassed to buy themselves flowers well okay so maybe 
maybe uh, yeah, it's okay if you're embarrassed to buy yourself flowers, but you can certainly buy yourself a plant that has flowers and there's nothing to be like embarrassed about having a, a nice plant in your house with flowers. Um, so, uh, and that, that smells good. Um, also, uh, have some beautiful photos. Uh, uh, there's scientific evidence that if you like work in, in a cubicle, something like that, where you don't have a window, if you just have one photo of nature up on your wall or whatever you have there in your cubicle, that makes all the difference in the world. Uh, photos of nature really, really help us. So, uh, so yeah, have, have beautiful photos in your house um, and, um, and, and sounds, yeah, whatever sounds that, that we were talking about, um, tunes before, whatever tunes that that you like that make you feel strong that make you feel alive and um uh and and powerful uh go for it listen to it i mean if it's if wagner's ride of the valkyries or if it's uh orchestral heavy metal or whatever uh, i mean it just uh, uh listen to music music helps i i also believe i believe in affirmations maybe that sounds a little corny and new ages but um i think i think the the trick with affirmations is that people like they just say them they just repeat them like there's some kind of magic formula they're not a magic formula you have to really put your emotion into it when you're saying it when you're saying an an affirmation you have to like put a hundred percent of your belief and your feeling into that affirmation um and and that i think is is it's worked for me uh also we've talked about um quieting the mind uh, sometimes when in the past maybe I would have like been praying uh, now what I do is I just I just be quiet and maybe count my breaths mm. uh, yeah get my mind off of the, the problem mm. and I've had like real miracles happen in my life i mean real miracles when i i just stopped thinking about what was the problem and just just uh breathed uh uh also uh purification well, stay right there uh, for one like, second stay right there for one that? second Lawrence. stay right there for one second uh because oh, okay, what you're talking okay. about is what you're talking about is yoga and from yoga oh, yeah, the, yeah. the distinction is that if you're praying you're talking to the universe but if you're meditating you're actually listening and that's why we have two ears so i didn't want to jump off that point before you moved on to the other i think that's where the expansion can grow if you're talking so much you're not taking the enough time to listen in that quiet in that quietness so just wanted to highlight oh, no, that No, there you go. There you go. And and it's it's like we were talking about before, like 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 listening to your elders or I mean I mean that that sounds like a little like maybe old fashioned or something. But I mean like if if you're reading a book that was written, I don't know, fifty, seventy five years ago that like uh gives good advice that's your elders talking to you. Um, mm. uh, so, uh, you know, I really recommend like reading books that, that like uh, have a positive message that, that do put you on the right track. When I was, when I was about, I don't know, 22, 23, I was playing in a band and um, uh, the band leader was uh, 40 
uh, at that time. And for me, I thought he was like, you know, like ancient. Uh, but uh, he told me, he said, uh, Lawrence, you, uh, why don't you read these books? He gave me the title of like uh, three or four books. And boy, did they change my life just reading. Yeah. And, and they're basic, you know, self-help books. Um, uh, one is, uh, what is it, Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell mm-hmm. Maltz. Uh, yeah. But, but that, that was a great beginning for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, there's lots of things. Yeah, yeah I was uh, going to mention purification. Uh, that, that's been something that's been around a long time uh, uh, in, in many different belief systems, uh, washing yourself before, uh, before meditation or prayer. Uh, or uh, or just smudging yourself like the uh, the indigenous Americans uh, with some kind of uh, incense or sage or something like that mm-hmm. uh, and uh, yeah and I'm not ashamed to admit that uh, that I do uh, explore entheogens natural natural uh, uh, psychedelics uh, mm-hmm. I think uh, in the right circumstances with with the right people uh, uh, that can be that can be helpful. But uh, I What's do. What's your favorite that, right now? I different. Well, I do have a uh, little friend growing upstairs uh, called the San Pedro cactus, mm. and. Uh, yeah, that's um uh we're gonna see uh what what that what that does. I've I've never tried San Pedro, but I I've done mescaline uh before and uh I, I do enjoy taking mushrooms. Uh, uh I have never taken uh DMT straight. I know some people right now are pushing that envelope like mm-hmm. so far mm-hmm. and uh i'm not i'm not sure how i feel about that because uh i don't know some of the people that i've heard uh, they come back talking like uh i don't know they're like suddenly the you know gurus or something like that <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't really dig that. I mean, these gurus, they're like almost all of them are like either having sex with all the women in their group or they're uh yeah. uh they're ripping ripping everybody off for all the money they yeah. have. Um uh, it's just uh, I don't know. So are- are you saying, Lawrence, that there's nothing new under the sun? Are, are we going through what happened in the 60s and, and before? <laughs> there's these waves. They continue to ebb and flow, man. It's just the, if we don't talk to our ancestors, we wouldn't have known that. Well, there you go. There you go. Uh, and, I, yeah, there's, there's, like, there's like this strange hatred of the 60s that has suddenly mm-hmm. appeared. Now, I'm not, I, I, I know there's like, now there's like almost, I think I read a hundred different ideologies. It, it, mm-hmm. It's like getting so absurd. Like, you can't just be Democrat or Republican anymore. I mean, you have like all these like alt-right and all this other stuff. But from a certain area, there's like coming this like absolute hatred of the 60s and people are saying the most horrible things about now of, of course fucked up things happened during that the the 60s but i think some amazing mind opening mm-hmm. uh things happened and uh I, I was part of that. I was at the tail end of it, but but I, I thank my my lucky stars 
that that I was able to participate in that in, in just just a bit, but just enough to uh, to know that that this this can this can change the world and um mm-hmm. so uh, well yeah, speaking I, of uh, speaking of mind opening i kind of knew this was going to happen but the hour has flown by and i know we it, oh. we touched the the surface we scratched the surface on so many subjects but i, I did want to i didn't want to get off without you at least highlighting your website and any books that you wanted to promote and then we can have you on to uh, go deeper down the rabbit hole if you'd like. Oh well, I, I, I would love to have another talk with you. This, this has been like, you ask the most interesting questions, and we like, I, you've taken me into such interesting places. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, well, the name of my new book is is called Alien Parasites. 40 Gnostic Truths to Defeat the Archon Invasion. Uh, you don't have to remember that. Just, just, go to, um, just go to Amazon.com and type in my name, Lawrence Gallien, in the space bar, and you'll see all my books and uh, a biography about me. So uh, you know, people can just check it out and see if they're, they're in, uh, interested in, in, in all that. And um, yeah, I think that that's 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 all I need to say right now. Well, uh, let me ask but, you this yeah. last question: Since you were talking about the alien parasites, um, and you were talking about some ancestors are in hell just because they didn't have the awareness, uh, there is some conversation with archons or alien parasites that you go into the light, <laughs> and then that kind of puts you back on the the treadmill to reincarnate back into this third dimension. Is that? highlighting what the the book is about ah well i'm 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 talking this book this book goes all the way back to um the actual um uh beginnings of like what began christianity and um like what happened to actually create what we call the bible today and going back before the time of uh, of who who we know of as as Jesus Christ and who was Jesus Christ and um, uh, but but yeah I I believe that that it is very important that um, we we have to it, this this is such a, a profound topic that. I really, I really think we we, we need it. we need another show to talk yeah. about this because now you're getting into some some really intense stuff. Uh, I, I'd like because like the moon plays such a big role in all of this. The solar yeah. system plays yeah. such a big role in all of this, and um, so when when I'm talking about alien parasites. I'm talking about beings that are not indigenous to this planet, uh, uh, beings that people are experiencing. Uh, some people are saying that they are reptilian. Some people are are seeing, uh, and and this 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 actually comes from the Nag Hammadi scriptures that were just recently discovered. And just recently translated into a decent translation. These are the books that that should have been in the Bible, uh, but were deliberately left out because because they have they have the real deal. They're the real deal. I mean, there's this Gospel of uh, Mary Magdalene. There's a Gospel of Judas. Do you know? Speaking of the Gospel of Judas. I told you I grew up in Long Island. I grew up in Hicksville, Long Island. And do you know where they hid the Gospel of Judas? They hid it in a bank vault in Hicksville, Long Island. And <laughs> my mother my mother had a an account in that bank vault and I went so many times into that 
bank vault. I was inches away from the from the gospel of Judas, and I didn't even know it. So mm. you were talking about there's no coincidences. There's no coincidences. Not. I mean, come on. Well, let me ask you, because I have to edit the, some of this anyway. I mean, it's 1.15. We can go until 2 o'clock, and we'll stay in the same, if you have the time, because uh, we have the stream of consciousness going. I really don't want to break it. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Is that fine? Yeah, we can do okay. that. Okay. So when you're, you're talking about the Nag Hammadi and being uh, just recently discovered or rediscovered, and um, that kind of made, made me think of the Gospel of Timothy also in the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is relatively around the same time period, and you're talking yes. about alien parasites and why this hasn't been kept. Has that been purposeful? I mean, we were talking about uh, earlier with uh, the King James Bible, and he had written it after he had written Demonology, and he was part of Witch Crusades when he had written Demonology. So when we were talking about ancestral worship and things like that, it could have been uh, alien communication. It was purposely kept out. Oh, what do you, what do you think wow. Right? Wow, wow. That, that's a perspective that I can really, really get into. Because, I mean, well, I mean the, the word alien, uh, and I mean, for a lot of people that has a lot of like negative connotations, like, uh, like alien abductions and things like that. But, but really, you know, when we're talking about when we're talking about the cosmos, there's been a process of, of evolution that has been taking place in the cosmos, and there has been a process of, of, of revelation uh, that has been taking place where, where uh, there's communication. I think, I think that's what you're getting at, that uh, certain groups of people... Uh, for instance, I was initiated into a group that's called the Masters of Wisdom, and uh, they they come from uh, the uh, well, I guess you would call it the the Near East, like Turkmenistan, uh, Uzbekistan, uh, that that area uh, of the Middle East, uh, and 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 they they have the wisdom of that that goes back that goes back so far uh i i studied sufism for you know maybe 30 40 years of my life and i really believe that that that, that sufism is, is nothing more in, in its essence than than shamanism mm-hmm. and that yeah, that 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 uh, shamanism. We really need to get back into shamanism because that's where that's where the the shaman would contact these. They would call them power animals, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and, and and other beings that they would encounter. And I think these these are these are you might call them extraterrestrials. They are they are beings that are in one way or another involved in with our planet in uh, a positive or a negative way. Um, and uh, but yeah, they have throughout time communicated with us and 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 we've learned how to communicate with them but i do think i mean there was a deliberate effort with with the translation of of the uh the dead sea scrolls uh to to suppress the translation i mean they did everything the catholic church did everything in its power to suppress the translation of, of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, do you agree with that? Uh, absolutely. I think 
when you were talking about, just going back for a second, when you're talking about shamanism, I think the biggest travesty is not recognizing that everything happens for a reason. There's no accidents. And so if I'm continuing to see cardinals in front of me or I keep seeing beavers in front of me, like that's the animal kingdom communicating to you, but you just think, oh, not you, but euphemistically you, oh, wow, that's cool. I keep seeing beavers. <laughs> that to- that could be a part of your totem. And if you don't know that, and, you know, that's where I was kind of going into uh, either Archons or Demiurge uh, sending you to a fake place or coming back through reincarnation. It's because, uh, if we don't let them, if we, like we said, like you said, if you suppress a lot of information, you're not going to be empowered to transition. You're going to be stuck and you're going to be on that wheel repeating patterns. Well, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I really try to bring out in this new book, Alien Parasites, that their agenda is to make humanity as stupid as possible. And they are doing this by involving us, again, as much as possible in, in all uh, 